Hey everyone, it's Widgie here and I have the beast, the one and only, the best India player. I'm saying it right now. I'm going to say it. The best India player, I think. And if Widgie thinks, it's got to be, it's got to be true. And it is Aiken. Aiken, how you doing, man? Hi, I'm fine and you? Thanks yeah. for the invitation. No probs. Now, one quick question. Who who is allowed to call you Tit and who isn't? Everybody in chat calls you Tit. I say Aiken and they're like, who who's this Aiken guy? I don't know who he is. I know who Tit is, but I don't know who Aiken is. So what is there any backstory around that? Is that what you were called in Legacy or Um Yeah, that was basically that wasn't my my own account, so it was my brother's one and since he is my big brother I didn't really know what it means before and uh, yeah my my nickname my own is Aiken so yeah I see a lot of people saying keep keep talking me uh, about these things and uh, yeah but you can call me Aiken it's okay. Aiken aka Tit you know who it is yeah. so we're going to be just going through five quick tips and then we're going to be rounding it off with a few extra bits at the end so the first tip tip Aiken's going to just run through quickly is around aging up from age one to two. So what do you recommend is the easiest thing for new players, people learning India to get from age one to two as quickly as possible? Uh, the best thing to do with India with the wheels is just, just to, pair, to put the five first wheels on the wood and keep them until you age two. And all other wheels that you train just straight to the food. Once you have the 800 food, you just put four wheels. This is my point of view, my game style. You put four wheels on the wonder. And when you start aging age two, you put six wheels on the wood and you just macro as you need, uh, depending on the treasure for the wood, uh, for the food and the god, sorry. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's, as I say, yeah, I've, I've, I've actually done this in practice. And yeah. before I was stressing about how many you should put and I kept moving veils off of wood onto wood. But ever since I watched you on Twitch and you, you just left five on wood, I did that yeah. and it just, it was so like less stressful, a lot quicker to get into the age. I think that's really a, a really nice tip. So definitely give that a go. So moving on to tip number two, and it is Ag replacement. So this is a big one. And obviously there's going to be various matchups and maps and stuff like that. But just as an overview, uh, what's your best sort of recommendation and advice around placing your agra fort in age two? Well, uh, there are different types uh, of placement agra, agra you can do. It's just depending on what uh, save you face and what you really want to do. For example, if you want to rush, obviously the middle agro placement is the best one. But if you want to make a bit uh, economic build, so the best thing to do is just to put the agra near the TC or maybe just behind the TC. Yeah. So if your opponent gonna rush you, you will have your Rex. I mean the the agra protect by the TC, so he will not really commit into your TC and the agra because he won't be able to siege down the aggro and get the, the 40 XP, for example. Yeah, and also when you put the aggro in the middle of the map, is there any sort of key areas that players should be looking for where they want to place their aggro? Is there any specific areas of the map um, that they should be putting it in? Well, the best placement, the best spot is just uh, near gold mine and the hunt, for, yeah. obviously, because this is really what you do as India. If you put your aggro in the mid map, you want to control the map to have the most, uh, the the more resources you can have. And if you can even back herd some hunts from your opponent base, it would be even better. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's absolutely, that's absolutely perfect. Fantastic. Moving on to the third tip then, which is an interesting one, which is all about your first card that you're going to pick up when you go into age two. And I've got here that foreign logging seems to be your go-to rather than the 700 wood. And I, I remember on one of your streams, you mentioned that you just decided to change it once and it seemed to work a lot better for you. Uh, yeah, that's true. I used uh, for a very long time the 700 wood first, but recently I started to just change my game style to switch from the wood crates to the frame login. And I really feel this is just way better because in the end, nowadays I don't even send any more the 700 wood because it's just depending on how good your macro is and with this frame login and the distributivism with some wheel on the wood. You can quickly gather uh, wood to build your consulate, to build the market and do some upgrades without really having the crates wood in your base. So basically you just save one shipment because 
in the end, if the game go to the late game, you will have way more gathering wood thanks to this shipment. So, um, so with the, so do you recommend just keeping it in there? Because I still keep seven hundred wood in there just in case. Do you recommend yeah, yeah. just in case if you are under a lot of pressure and you you don't want to go too greedy in some circumstances, you might need to go seven hundred wood. Yeah, sometimes you want to send seven hundred wood. For example, if you want, I know some player like to take a TP. If you want to take a TP fast, and if you expect a rush, you can build, for example, a TP consulate uh, houses, even a stable. Yeah. And even a dock, if the the map uh, can afford you to have a dock. So yeah, some sometimes when you want to, for example, even boom and defend the rush, you can send the seven hundred wood uh, in the first shipment H two for just to have the tech on the market and consulate for defend yourself with the Ottoman consulate. And uh, moving on to the tip number four, and this is going to be a big one, especially for me still, and also people learning the sieve or just getting to grips with the sieve, and it's stacking of wood. Now, especially if you're going to go for the foreign logging, like we mentioned in the previous tip, be most likely stacking a lot of wood. And what's one of the best ways to try and combat this and try and keep your wood levels low? Um... Well, as we said earlier, uh, when you reach the H2, you're supposed to have six wheels on the wood. And if your first shipment H2 is a foreign login, uh, the thing is that after a few minutes, you will slowly uh, to overstack the wood and it will be pretty useless until you try and rush put, but nobody try and rush put because your unit is pretty bad. So what you can do is, for example, once you Take fully the market because you need a lot of wood to to do this. You just start removing one, two, three, four wheels from this wood to put them on the gold or on the food to just have a better macro. Yeah, and so it's it, it's just trying to kind of balance it. And the minute the minute that foreign logging yeah. comes in, ideally yeah. you want to have maybe what what would you recommend just to maintain houses and villager production? How many wheels do you kind of want on wood after you've got foreign logging? Uh, I think after maybe one minute, uh, you can start removing the, the wheels to between 0 to 2. Honestly, most of the time, I just put two at a certain point when you see you don't really need other building. Like yeah. if you already have two or three raxes, then you just remove the two mm. remaining wheels on the wood and put them on the food or on the gold. Yeah. But I, I think definitely, like, after one minute of getting foreign login, I think it's safe to say that you kind of don't want yeah. six or seven vills on wood. You kind of want to bring it down a little bit if you can. Yeah. But it all depends yeah, exactly. on, of course, what you're doing, as you mentioned, about buildings, so potentially a dock as well. Just kind of bear that in mind and, and always make sure to, to reduce some vills off of wood um, after yeah. you've got foreign login. But for example, if you just quickly uh, make a dock with a foreign login, you can just put like two or three wheels on the wood to have a constant production of wheel fishing both and to make some houses to have the space pop. So the final tip then, tip number five is around water play. So if you want to decide that you're going to go on water as India, what's the best way to approach it? Because it's not kind of like Euro sieves. It's a different way that you should really approach it. So uh, what would you recommend? Uh, well, the, there are just two different types of water booming. I mean, not. I'm, I'm just talking of uh, a semi water booming. Like uh, the first, the the first one is just to play with the the card H1 that give you a free dock with a, a reducing cost wood for the fishing boats. So if you play with this card, you want to basically send it in the second card, which is kind of a really heavy economic levy game style yep. so the point is just to defend yourself you don't go outside of the base until you are until you have a really good eco and you can offer the military units from two or three raxes and uh, because if you go out and you lose your army you will be really in trouble if the opponents have uh, for example cannon in h3 because you will not be able to counter it properly and you will probably lose your base and then it's over yeah and the second one is just not to play with this card because the fishing boats are basically 70 wood costs. And uh, you just, uh, in, in this game, you can send the 700 wood first in H2 to just make uh, houses, market, consulate to defend yourself and training fishing boats and villagers with this uh, wood crates. I think those tips, those five tips there, 
they're kind of interesting ones. Not a lot of people would be thinking about some of those. So as I say, take that away, guys, and hopefully that will improve your India game. And especially if people want to try out India, then you can either go and visit my beginner's guide that I did quite a while ago, and you can obviously take on board some of these tips. So just to wrap up the video then, just around the deck and some card choices that you've seen other people playing. And one of the ones that I've got down here is around the Team Yurumi card. So do you want to just touch upon that? A little bit aching. Uh, yeah. Uh, the thing I uh, I saw is a lot of players actually put the four team Euromis in their twin deck, playing one v one, and I think this is not really a good thing because first the card is being nerfed. Before it was five Euromis, now it's four, so it's not really worth it to have only four Euromis in H three. And the thing is, uh, since this is a team card, you don't get the plus one villagers, so it's kind of a double nerf. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know about that, and I always thought it was strange that people had a the team card, especially just for Yurumi, but I completely yeah. forgot about the fact that it doesn't give you a villager either. Yeah, and the thing is that the four Yurumi shipment is more expensive than the seven Yurumi. So basically, a lot of people put both on the on the deck, but I really think the four Yurumi team card is not really worth it anymore. Okay, one v one. And the uh, and the final one is um, quite a popular one in age four, and it's the if I pronounce this correctly, it's the Shivaji Tactics card, which basically gives you a is it a five percent damage across all units? Is that correct? Yes. Five percent damage and five percent hit point on every unit of your civilization. But, yeah. So uh, so so as I say, like a lot of people think that's quite a powerful card, and it is a powerful card. But what do you yeah, think about yeah, yeah. that in a one v one situation? Well, honestly, I think this is really good when you mainly make Mahood, but even if you really make Mahood, because the 5% hit point is still really good, because the base base uh, hit point of the Mahood is pretty high, so yeah. it would provide you a huge stat bonus. But the thing is, this card is not really insane. It's not like it was 10% or something, it's only 5 and for me, you just want to have another card, for example, the, the four Maud shipment or the 14 Sipo is just way better to the 5%. Okay, lovely. All right. I think that's absolutely great. I think we wrap that up. Nice five tips going over the cards options as well. So all I've got to say is Aiken, thank you very much, dude. Um, I, really, you, I, I really appreciate you coming on and, and speaking to me, especially, you know, you're, you're up there with the big boys top 20 uh, league. So coming down to uh, my scrub level and uh, having a having a chat with me has been it's been absolutely awesome. <laughs> ah, you're welcome. And that was that was fire doing this kind of uh, this kind of stuff for the community. Yeah, yeah, I, it's good. It's I good to help people. Yeah, yeah. And as I say, hopefully, hopefully um, it won't be too painful for you. But in the future, you might might be uh, interested in coaching me live coaching yeah, me with yeah, India. Yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. Awesome. I will try to make you uh, a beast. Basically. Try yeah. to make me a beast. <laughs> All right, you, you might have to try quite hard. Um, Aiken, thank you very much, dude. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, man.